Fender Baseman 410, 410 inch drivers in this. This is in um, suspected red plating tube. Uh, we're going to get the back off it and uh, have a look, see what we're dealing with. So looking in the back, you can see we've got four very nice Jensen speakers in this. This, I think, is from the early 2000s. And uh, 59 Baseman, this one is. And you can see the if you look at the sides of the cabinet there they're made apply so this is quite a nice amp so let's get this back off and uh, have a look and we'll have a look at the tubes and whatever else is in there so I'm just looking at this socket you can see the chassis is slightly off center um, and you can see where the jack socket to, is pushed right up against the tolex there and you can see where the jack plug's been it pushed in and out and the tolex is actually marked so we're not sure what's going on there whether this amp's had a bit of a knock or something but we'll just get these screws out now whoa that screw is bent Take that out. <laughs> we just um, let's put that drill down. That screw is bent. Look, <laughs> probably can't see. So I'll just probably <laughs> weird. So I wonder if this amp has had a little bit of a knock on that side. Let's take these out on this side. <laughs> Well, they're okay on this side. Let's take this one out on the bottom on here. Take this one out. Oh, that one. Look at that one. So that one's bent as well. Two bent screws. Right, now we need to get this ground off here. Can't, probably can't see but if we look we've got ground wire on here so we need to remove that there we go and he's gone on the floor but we'll find him now the first thing that, str that strikes you odd in this amp is that it's I can see it's got five double eight ones in there and if you look down here on the two complement sticker there we've got 606 GC's so this this amp has the wrong tubes in it is that a problem uh, maybe yes and no so we just take one of these out and these are joint army navy tubes and there let's have the other one out and have a look Yeah, these are Jan's Philips ECGs, 6L6 WGB, which is or five double eight one. So this tube, and we, funnily enough, the last video of the Marshall, who was looking at this, these tubes have, have a dissipation of twenty three watts, a max dissipation. A 6L6 GC has a max dissipation of thirty watts. So somebody's put these tubes in this amp, probably so it'll break up quicker. Because, obviously, it won't be as loud with those in. But also, we need to check how that's affecting the effective load resistance of the output transformer. Some people just shove tubes into amps and think, oh, that'll be okay. But in that, it's actually not. You know, these really need to be... 6L6 GCs but we could we may be able to make these work the other problem is if you just put these tubes straight into the amplifier and it's not and they're not been biased for these you're gonna have a serious problem here is a tube that you would bias at six at 16 watts and a 6LG oh, that's idle at 70% and a 6L6 GC would be 21 watts is that right 10 percent 70 percent of 30. so that means that if this tube 
if these tubes originally in this amp was 6L6 GCs, which they obviously were, they would be biased idle at, at 21 watts. So when you shove this, the 5881s in, which, uh, which only dissipate 23 watts maximum, you've now got those sat idle 90%-ish. So they're actually 23.5 watts max dissipation if we want to be picky about it. 90% almost, just shy of 90%. So just imagine when you start playing the guitar through this, bear in mind that's at idle, you start playing the guitar and the current goes up on the tubes. And if the bias has been set a little higher for the GCs, let's say it was 22 over, well then you're almost, you really are almost at 100%. And so we've got a red plating tube. So let's just put these tubes in and see where we are with them. So we're gonna plug this amp in and see what happens. I'm also then going to investigate why this chassis is skew whiff on there. In fact, I might just investigate that before we switch off. So we've loosened that off a little, and now we've moved this chassis out, and that has actually moved that away from there. So that that is just the chassis has been. It's on. You can. The hole's got a bit of an adjustment for it, and it's just got pushed in there. So we'll, that's okay. So we can. We know we can level that up after. Right, so we're going to have a look at these tubes now and just see if we've got any red plating or what's going on. So just flick out one of the lights so it make it a bit easy to see. Flick the other light out for a minute. Yeah, a bit of frying and popping. Mm, something's getting a bit hummy. So I think, uh, and there we go, we can just beginning to see that red plate. There, that's enough of that. So we'll let those cool down and uh, we'll then swap them round and see if we get the same problem on the other side. Having said that, if they biased it quite high, that could be the problem as well. Right, I've swapped them over. So let's just see what happens now. Doing a bit of popping again.
Yes, I think it's that tube. It's not actually red plating at the moment, but. Hmm. Switch the lights back on. So we've still got a little bit of that popping, but we've now not we've not got um, any red plating. So I am wondering again if it, if the bias on this amp is just excessively high. So what we're going to do now is uh, is get this amp this chassis out of the case, and uh, we're going to have a look at it. We're also going to do a full recap on this amp, and here's why. So we've still got these IC caps in there, you can see, and we all know the history of those. It's quite common all over the internet. Every man and his dog now knows, well, anybody who's into guitar apps knows that those caps are not great, and the rest of them, again, will be in the doghouse on the other side. I think you can see the screws for the doghouse on the back, back there, so that's where they'll be. So we need to get this out get this out of the chassis we need to change those and then there's a couple of caps on the bias i think which will also and they are oh, there up there i think that's a c c23 and 22 i think and there's a 26 there c26 that they'll be changed and then there's just one ho over here which may just be a bypass capacitor or something down that end probably is C1, we'll have to check on the schematic, you can just about see him in there, it's a bit dark. So we'll change him as well, so not, not a lot of caps. And this is quite a nice amp really, because yeah, there's a PC board there, but you know, that's, that's okay. These tubes are mounted properly on the chassis, they're not mounted on the board. This is a tidy amp, and we can make this, you know, sort this out, and uh, make it 100% again so I'm going to replace these two coupling capacitors uh, C13 and I think the other ones are the C12 or 14 I can't see because they've been squeezed together and some gumption put in between them keep them together so I'm going to change those uh, because they're over 20 years old and they get they see the most voltage those coupling caps and they're the coupling caps to the output tubes output tubes are expensive now they cost pennies it makes sense while I've got this board out just bang some new ones in right let's get this out of the chassis and uh, get it on the bench and have a proper look right so we've got this out of the out of its cabinet it's got some tasty transformers on it let's get the top off this dog house and have a look in here let's bring the camera in a little more so you can see The screen cans are actually missing off the uh, off the preamp tubes, but they're actually in a box. They're in a box in the back of the amp, so we'll replace those as well. And yes, they're the uh, original ICs caps there, as we thought. If we just hone in, could inspect them. They look they look okay, but they've been in there a good while. The customer said he bought this amp in, in the early 2000s. So we know those are at least 20 years old. I'm just going to put those in that there. And we use that to put the, keep the bits in. So we need some new caps to go in there. We'll check those dropping resistors in there as well. Right, so this is the centre tap wire coming through here. And I've just traced that through. And then it does a bit of a pirouette there and goes down to there, which is a CP23. Right, so we're going to take a measurement from that centre tap to the, each of the plates on these tubes. So that's one of them, and you can see the meter there. I think we'll call that 47.6. 47.6 R, 47.6 ohms. I think these tube sockets have been changed as well. 
they don't look factory they're ruby tube sockets and they look to me like they've been changed so I'm not sure so now we'll test the other side again we'll go down to there this time it's the brown wire on this one Forty-four point five, we'll call that. It's a little discrepancy between those, but not massive. Forty-four point five R. Now I could have biased this amp up while it was in the case. Could have just checked the bias while it was in the case. But I like to take them out and look at. I couldn't see where the wires were coming out of the transformer and. I like to make sure uh, before I start doing any testing I know where all the wires are going from the transformer so we get all his readings correct we're not measuring off something that we think is right but isn't it is a bias problem and here's why so this is the first tube that that tests okay 14.9 now the other tube that was in here run away I remember I've got three tubes the, the one that we saw red plating that just runs away and you'll see why in a minute this is the other tube that was left with this amp the three of them so i put that in and i've done the test look what that's come out at 23.15 so that tube is running virtually at a hundred percent if we look here we've got 47.6 on this side of the transformer we've got 44.5 on the left side if you remember the left side we saw it red plate we didn't actually see it red plate on the right side but we could tell it was getting a little bit iffy from the popping so it would be drawing even more current in this side than it would in that side technically because there's less resistance now how do i know that that is a typical bias problem well this is the tube that uh, is running at 14.9 and notice that the green writing on there it's the same type it's a jan tube now let's look at the other tubes that came out of the three. Let me just remove that. Here, here's the, this is the tube that's good but runs red hot. And if we look on there, you can see it says 28, 2.8. Now if we look at the tube that is running away, and I put that here. This is to keep them so I don't get them mixed up. This is the tube that's running away. Also the blue pin, print writing. And also they've been matched 28, 2.5 on there. So these are, these are a matched set. And when these were put in the amp, these tubes draw more current than the uh, previous set. And this, this tube is, part, is from that previous set of tubes. But we've only got one of them. So, for, so when these were put in, suddenly the bias was uh, excessively high because these tubes are drawing more current and this one, you know, has not fared very well. Man, that's a shame. These are quality tubes. You know, the, these Jans Joint, uh, Joint Army Navy Phillips tube, that's a, a quality bit of kit. This is what happens when you put tubes in an amp and don't bias it up. So it is simply a bias problem there. And look at the difference. We've got there, you know, 9 watts. Almost 9 watts difference there. 8 watts. Massive amount. So, I've now got... What I'm now going to do... And I, and I don't... I'm going to put these tubes back in this amp before I do it. I'm going to turn the bias down cold and to do that I'm going to leave the tubes out and uh, I'm going to uh, just connect the speaker back up again bit of a pain with these phono plugs I'm having to jump her onto here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now the tubes are tin we're not going to damage anything so we 
I'm going to adjust the bias there. So we want pin five. So we'll three, four, five, the green one there. So if we look again, can you still see the meter? There, not quite. Just trying to put it in the camera shot. So what I'm going to do now. is we've got negative 49 there so now you can't see because I'm in the way just about so that's going up that way and that's what I mean about taking the tubes out that turned anti-clockwise and the bias has gone up that would be and you can see clockwise the bias goes down not by a lot either well it does 55 49 so I've now turned the bias cold but most people would see that as turning it hot because it's clockwise and then the tubes really do get some Beppo. So always do, always do this while you've got the tubes out. So now we've got negative 48 because there's no way of knowing which way that's wired unless you've worked on hundreds of these and you know you can remember. So now we've got that bias cold. We've got, let's put, we're going to put this good tube but drawing high current in the left side and we're going to put the running away tube in the right side now I've turned the bias right down I don't know how low that bias has gone now but it will have gone significantly lower and now we're going to switch on and what we're going to do is we are going to monitor that tube there and I'm just going to have to Move the camera slightly out of the way there because I won't quite get in safely. And you can see that that tube is running away. Let's now check this one. Is at 1.8. This one is just running away. We can't even get an accurate reading, and there we go. So he's he's all over. So this tube here is done, and it's done simply because these tubes were put in, and this amp was not biased, and it's scolding out. I've got this one down to 1.8 now, um, which still is probably pretty high. So let's we can get the bias from that 1.8. Sorry, we get the current 1.8. Uh, divide by what we got 44.5 now that's running at 40 milliamps we, we it's no good trying to get the plate voltage because this amps running up this one's valves running away so much the plate voltage would be plummeting at that so we wouldn't get an accurate reading but we've got a rough reading of 40 milliamps now a good tube in here we might end up with a bit less on there a bit more but even at 40 milliamps if we use our original 469, that's still at 18.9 watts, which is too high for these tubes, but it's not massively high. So, in other words, what's happened is the preset is now at its coolest point and won't go any cooler. These tubes would still have been running too hot. Not massively too hot, but they'd have still been running too hot. And that is why you cannot put five double eight ones straight into an amplifier that takes six L six GCs. Why do I do all of this? You know, why don't I just get on and, and mend this amp? Well, it's entertainment for one thing, and also, you know, it's teaching people something that you can't just take. And people do it. You know, it, it's just why wouldn't you? you? You know, people think, you know. And to be fair to this guy, he took this amp to a tech. And the tech not told him he needed two new tubes. So he put the tubes in. <laughs> well, they, they get, what's the guy supposed to do? You know, he didn't say, put the, you, oh, we'll need to have that in and bias it for you. He just told him to put two new tubes in it. So the guy did what he was told. You, you know, the, the, the guy's not a tech. He's been, he's been and sought professional advice. And the guy's told him to put the tubes in it. Right, we're going to do a bit of a test here. So I've got this amp on a dummy load. And we've got a couple of uh, meters there, you can see. And you can see the one on the right, that's the plate voltage. And the other one is the volts drop. 
across the uh, across the output transformer. So from the plate of this of the tube that we've got on the right, you can't see the tube, but down to centre tap. Now at the moment I've got about 164 volts on there. I'm just going to bring that up. And you can see those rising now, those figures. Now this tube on the right is already uh, biased because of the current it draws at about 20 watts that we've got on there. Let's just check. We've actually got 23 watts. So it's already biased at 100%. Now when you strum the guitar on a fixed bias amp, when you start playing the guitar through it, the plate voltage will drop and the current will increase which means then the tube is drawing even more than 23 watts and it, it, it's hard it's going to be hard to get a reading on it with the guitar but if I if I just strum the guitar if you watch where it's, it says 473 that's the plate volts when the plate voltage drops the current increases because of, of the the obviously the signal from the guitar is driving the tubes so watch what happens that's now down to 440 there roughly 440 so that means that the, the, the wattage of that tube has increased even more this is why we set tubes to 70% on fixed bias amps to allow that 30% so when you're strumming the guitar these tubes probably are running at 100% but if you bias them at 100% idle then You'll, you'll, they'll be running at more than 100% and that's what burns them out. Right, I've got a set of 6L6s in this amp now. There's a pair out of my tube stash. We're going to see if these match. Before we start biasing these tubes, we need to make sure that this is set at 240 volts. I've measured the plate voltages, uh, sorry, I've measured the filament voltages and they are 6.7 volts. We need to check the mains voltage is correct on this primary on this power transformer. We need to make sure it's 240 volts. Remember, a lot of the fenders that come into this country are wired for 230 and it pushes up the filament voltage. So we need to make sure that that's correct. So if we look at this diagram, we've got all these connection points going on here. And if we look at 230, we go down as far as CP30. You can see they're all the same on 230 volts and 240 volts. But if we look at the last four squares, they're different. So if we look on black white, we've got CP2 and S1B, which is the switch. So if we look down here, CP2 is black and S1B is black white. So if we look in here, look, we've got white black and white black is on the switch. So we're now looking for CP2 and we can see CP2 has got the black wire. So looking at the diagram again, on 240, we've got CP2 black white and S1B black. So we need to swap those two wires around. So if we go back and look again, now if we, we need to remove, let's just make sure we've got the voltage off. Yes, we have. We need to swap this wire and we need to cut that tire up to do it. We need to remove black white from the switch or white black i say white black but it says black white on there oops my word that's on tight i'm afraid we'll have to get the pliers to him there we go and then we need to remove black from cp2 Keeps removed there. So let's try and get, keep, get these tidy so when we put the tie wraps back on, it all looks neat. So black, black's gone on the switch, and uh, white black goes on CP2 like that. And now we've switched, should have switched it over to 240. But just to be on the safe side, we're going to power this up on the Variac just to make doubly sure that we've got no that we that there's been no miss because because of course uh, you know we're relying on the schematic being accurate and schematics have been known not to be accurate on numerous occasions i've run it up on the variac to 240 volts 
and look at the difference. So on 230 volts, we had 464 volts, and now we've only got 449 volts. And on 230, we had 6.7, now I've got 6.1. So I'm just gonna move the camera over to there, and now I'm just gonna do a quick test on here. And we've got 2.3 on that side, and on this side, we've got 1.8. So those tubes are pretty unmatched, really. So we have 1.8 and 2.3. So those those aren't very well matched we can already tell just from that but nonetheless we'll uh, we'll have a quick look so 1.8 divided by 44.5 is 40 milliamps so we times that by our 449 now and we've only got 18 watts on there so that's really low and that's obviously that's obviously now lower because we've we've got that lower plate voltage now 18.6 watts and if we do the other side so we've got 2.3 divided by 47.6 equals we've got 48 milliamps on there which is considerably more and if we times that by our 449 well we get 21.6 so those tubes are not a match are they 18.6 and 21.6 the three watts out which is which is a lot really right i've got another set of 6l6 gc's in this amp and uh, we're going to see how much uh, and we're going to see how well matched this pair is so off we go again i'll just have this other light on One point five six on there. So let's try this side. Two point two. They're massively out. They're not even close. Not even close. So one point five, two point two. So I'm going to take this 6L6, uh, 6L6 from the from the previous pair and I remove the ouch that's hot. I remove this one. I hate these bear traps. So I'm going to put that one there. Now I've got another 6L6 here. I'm going to pop him in and see what he does. So the reason I'm doing this is, is that I've got these tubes. And uh, just going to see if we can make a pair up while we're doing all this experimenting and testing and so on. So let's test this side first. We've got two on that side. And we've got two on that side-ish. So hmm, we may have a matched pair there. And yeah, I know they look different on the bases, but and the bottles but so what if they're a match pair they're a match pair right I switch the tubes round and uh, very quiet now this amp as well I've switched the tubes round and look at that 18.7 19.1 I'd call that close enough that's uh, 0.4 of a watt I call those a good match so they may not look the same, but they are the same. And that's a damn sight cheaper option for the customer than putting a new pair of tubes. These tubes are perfectly good, so we might as well make use of them. So I'm going to put those in. So that, that's sorted this amp out now. We've, we've got the correct tubes in it. We've got them biased correctly. We've got the mains voltage set correctly. This is a really good basic amp. I really like this amp. 
I, I really like the way they've got these done. They, they really, it's, this is our PC board amps. If you're gonna have a PC board amp, this is how it should be. The two sockets mounted on the chassis all round. We've got the authentic rectifier tube. Um, we've got a very simple layout on the board. It's, it's um, you know, I mean, the pots are on a, on a little board, but at least on their own. That's and, and if that needed, you know, if that needed touching up with a soldering iron, you, you, you'd get underneath. You don't have to take that board out. So I, I think this is a pretty good design. Some people may disagree with me because it's a PC board amp, but I think this is a pretty good design. This is a good amp. It's got good transformers on it. So what are we going to change now? In, in it, We're going to change these three IC caps and then there's four more underneath in the doghouse. We're going to change those. And then there's three more, just three more little ones there which are on which two of those are on the bias not sure what the other one's doing and then there's we've got a cap over here which i i'm not sure but i think that might be a bypass capacitor but i have to look on the schematic that is speculation at this present time but i'm going to leave this as a part one now so if we you know let's just look look back at it or just come to a conclusion what we've done here so when this amp came in it had got the wrong tubes in it it had got five double eight ones in which are not right for this amp we got um one tube red plating because the bias was set too high on them the, you know as i've said on a five double eight one we've got a dissipation of 23.1 23 watts if we split in without splitting hairs we'd already got those biased up to a hundred percent we've seen what happens when you start playing the guitar through it what would and what was was happening with those tubes no wonder one of them's got you know basically red plated it's just had enough and said good night we've replaced the tubes we've found we've we've matched a pair up and we've got this amp now properly biased and this amp now is running lovely really is running nice if we get all these capacitors changed as well then it'll make this amp more reliable and why, why am I doing this? You know, well, it's, ent it's entertainment. You know, I'm not charging the customer for, for this experimental time. I, and what I've actually done in this video is I have diagnosed what actually blew those tubes. You know, well, that one tube. And it was obvious, you know, when you did the tests on it, those tubes were never going to stand that kind of current. They're not, you know, those tubes are not right for this amp and they, they really shouldn't be in it and that's and that's with that we know i haven't done all the tests on it the effective load resistance will be out with those tubes considerably so that that's another reason why we really shouldn't have those tubes i mean it wouldn't be out massively but it would be out the thing is we want this amp to run correct it's a nice amp so i've done this and what this has done it's it, it's to show people you know what happens when you just put a set of tubes into an amp and you don't bias that amplifier you've watched me match a set of tubes up and yeah i could have gone out and bought a brand new set that were already matched where's the entertainment in that video you've actually got to see me match these tubes up the way i've gone about it you know switching them in the sockets we've tried various tubes we've made a match pair up out of out of odd tubes and and we've made a good match pair up there the amp still isn't isn't biased correctly because these should be biased at 21 watts net but before when this was set at 230 volts we'd we'd got we was all virtually up to the bias point and the trim pot is was maxed out to its coolest now the trim pot's maxed out to its coolest and we've got we've got a set of tubes that uh, a bias slightly under 70 percent and we can now just adjust that trim pot and get these tubes in perfect and obviously i'll do that when i've got all the caps in it and we've finished it so that really that's what this video has been about it's it's you know it's been about uh, um you know biasing tubes incorrect tubes in the amp and I, you know i hope that's helped some of you because I, I do get questions from time to time you know about bias and things like that and I didn't really set out to do this video like this. It's just that with those tubes being in there, they presented a scenario with the mains voltage being wrong. It's presented another scenario. Then we got a red plating tube, presented another scenario. 
and I just thought it was a good opportunity to do this video on, on biasing and to show that you just cannot put a set of tubes in a fixed bias amp. So in part two, you'll, we'll, be, we'll be recapping this amp and, and I'm sure there's plenty of these being done online, but we'll have a look, Re we'll recap this amp, get it up and running and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a good demo of it. But that'll do it for this one. So thanks for watching and you all take care and I'll see you all in another video. Bye bye for now.